to take a class as a part of a training program uh, i think the time which is given to me is one and a half hours and after 30 for the last 30 minutes they will have the question and answer or if you feel that some you're not clear with it or you need some more explanation you are free to interrupt me at any moment and if any questions are there reserve it to the last so here i'm going to discuss on copyright infringement in digital era issues and challenges as we all know that copyright is a product of the technological development earlier days if you wanted to sit and copy a book or a novel we have to sit and write we have to take a pen and a paper with us and it's a very laborious task usually we will not copy even if you are asking to write a note also you feel that writing a note you won't feel comfortable what you do is that you go and take a copy of it with the help of a xerox machine technological advancement is taking place we have a photocopier now we can take now n number of copy without taking a pen and a paper to write it down and when you are taking a photocopy you are violating the right of a copyright over owner on the book which is being published by him so now the issue which arises is that who is an infringer what is the nature of liability can we make the company who manufactured the photocopier machine liable for it or can we make the operator of the photocopier machine liable and now we are not confining to the photocopier or a xerox machine alone technology is further advancing now what you are doing is that you scan the copy using your computer you upload it in your drive with an internet connection you are uploading in a website using the website you are giving an access to the public to view it access it and download it apart from this now you are using the peer to peer technology you are sharing the files now now the issues which arise is that who is an infringer can it be an internet access provider who provided the network for us or can it be a website operator using that we were able to upload in the website or can it be a provider of the file sharing the peer to peer technology many questions will arise who is responsible for it the person who downloaded the person who distributed uploaded the person who provide the platform for us to do the infringement or the internet service provider or the developer of the software n number of questions will arise before us to make them liable so before discussing into all those aspects let me give a brief introduction about the copyright law itself what is the copyright copyright is also like other categories of intellectual property it as it is an intangible intellectual property under the copyright law we protect the expression not the idea procedure method of operation mathematical concept as copyright is given to us by the statute we follow the copyright act 1957 last amended in the year 2012 copyright subsists in only in the following original work literary dramatic 
musical, artistic, sound recording, and cinematography. What are the conceptual basis? What is the minimum standard requirement for getting the copyright protection? Uh, it should be an original one. Original means originate from the author, not copied from others. It should be an independent creation. Second requirement should be fixed in any tangible media. Fixation is also a mandatory requirement. You are making a copy. How you are making a copy? Your work should be fixed. From where you can reproduce it. You can retrieve it. Then copyright protects only the expression, not the ideas. Ideas are considered to be in the public domain. There comes the doctrine of merger. Merger says that where the idea and expression are merged, we are not able to separate it. We are not able to demarcate it. Then we can say that that expression cannot be protected under the copyright law. Again, copyright is not to protect your sweat of the group. You are releasing the sweat when you are doing a laborious task. You are spending the time, money, effort in collecting and compiling a data or a things which are there in the public domain. That sweat is not being protected under the copyright law. What is needed is the modicum of creativity and that should be an original one, independent creation of work. If the standard requirement is being complied, you can see that the copyright protection can be given to the original expression of the work. What is covered under the different categories of the work are, with respect to the literary work, it includes books, pamphlets, poems, articles, letters, tables and compilations, and computer programs. We are bringing the computer program as a literary work. But we all know that computer program does a technical function. It contains a functional element. But still, the world economy has given a copyright protection for a computer program that too under the literary work. The textual work, the literal element is protected under the copyright law, but not the functional element is not being protected under the copyright law. The next category is artistic work. Artistic work includes painting, sculpture, drawing, diagram, cartoon, map, chart, plan, and engraving. Next is dramatic work. Recitation, choreographic, drum show, scenic arrangement, acting form of it. Musical work. Musical work means a work consisting of a music, including any graphical notation of such work. Sound recording means a recording of a sound from which sounds may be produced. Finally, we have the cinematograph film. Cinematograph film means any work of visual recording and includes a sound recording accompanying such visual recording. Then, for copyright protection, registration is not a mandatory requirement. The moment the work is created, copyright will subsist in that category of work. It gives you a bundle of rights. Bundle of rights includes reproduction rights, distribution rights, public performance rights, public display rights, <laughs> right to prepare derivative work, adaptation work, translation work. These are all the rights which are conferred to the copyright owner the moment the work is being created. Coming to the copyright and the digital technology. What do you mean by digital? Digital means everything is now being made available in the form of bits and bytes. That is in the form of ones and zeros, binary digits. It can be in the form of a text, images, sound, animation, and photograph. After the digitalization, we can see that it can be replicated easily. Perfect multiple copies can be generated by the same technology. And such copies can be made available and transmitted across the globe within a second. So we can see that on the one side, there is an advantage. 
we are able to distribute, we are able to access to the copyrighted work. But on the other side, what we are facing is that infringement of the copyright work. What do you mean by an infringement? Infringement means doing, authorizing to do any of the following acts without the consent or license of the owner of copyright. It includes reproduce the work, including its storage by any electronic means. Issue copies to the public. Perform, communicate the work to the public. Make translation of the work. Make adaptation of the work. To make in a cinematograph film, sound recording in respect of the work. Now, when we are discussing about the digital technology, my focus will be more on the peer-to-peer -peer technology, which every one of us are using it knowingly or unknowingly. I think everyone is interested in listening to the music, watching the movie. You are using the peer-to-peer -peer technology. The best example is the big torrent here. Here, we are sharing the file among the peer group with the help of a software by accessing the drive of an another person. I will be storing in my art drive. With the software, I am allowing the other user to look into my drive, to share the file, download the file, upload the file. That's possible using the peer-to-peer -peer technology. In the first stage of the technological development, you can see that a central server is there. But nowadays, central server is also not needed. It has become a decentralized. When you are using a torrent, we should be very careful enough. We should not watch the movie in online. Download it, go offline and watch it. If you are watching it in the online, what you can see is that someone else will be uploading from you all without your knowledge. Peer to peer technology. You can access what is that in your time. Sharing of the files. Peer to peer technology enable internet user to communicate directly with other users. Access the files stored on each other's hard drive. What you are using it? You are using it to watch the movie, to listening to the music. Now the issue arises: who is an infringer? If the user who receives the digital file through the peer-to-peer -peer network liable for infringement, user of it. If the user of the peer-to-peer -peer network who makes the file available, the one who uploads it, third, is the firm that creates the software for the peer-to-peer -peer network liable, software developer, are the companies that have made a computer that was used to share the files liable. That means the developer of the manufacturer of the computer. Are the internet service provider, online service provider, liable for in infringement? The ISP who provides us the transmission connection. Are the business that run banner advertisement on the software interface used to operate the peer-to-peer -peer network liable, the advertisement, the source of revenue for the website operator, can they be made liable? Now, the issue arises. What is the nature of the liability? Can it be a direct liability? Secondary liability, like the contributory liability, vicarious liability, liability of online service provider, liability of manufacturer of coming to the first one, direct life. The moment the direct liability comes, before making the contributory or vicarious liability, what is needed is that that should be a direct life. That should be a person who is infringing the copyrighted work directly. Here, yeah. the user are considered to be the direct infringer. See? And all of us are knowingly and unknowingly are doing the copyright infringement on a daily basis, on an hourly basis also, I can tell you. But are you being made liable? We take the defense of a family. We say that for the private purpose, for the educational purpose. 
so and so it is not for the commercial purpose we are not using it we are we are just watching it in the four walls of our house can you be made liable being a individual user and now if you are going to make the user liable user can take the defense of a sad you it will not stand and easy to find it out also who are the user who are doing the infringement with the help of an ip number internet protocol number here yeah. but what we are doing is that we are making the isp liable we are making the third person liable by saying that they platform they server they are making a copy here we have a case of a religious technological center versus netcom online communication service in this case RTP is a copyright owner of the published and unpublished work of a bird who is a founder of the Church of Scientology. They are the copyright owner. And then Erlich, a vocal critic of church, whose pulpit, that is the podium, where he is addressing the public for discussion and criticism of the Scientology. that pulpit is nothing but a alt religious scientology that it discuss it criticize the work of the abbot here and he upload the state in the internet with the help of a bulletin board service so what we can see is that earlier make a copy he upload in the bbs the bulletin board service storage server and from the it doesn't have the internet connection they are getting the connection from the netcom and through the netcom only they are able to have an access in the internet so what is happening is that the user is making a copy he makes a copy in a bbs that copy through the technical process the technical system it gets stored in the netcom server also through the netcom only is getting a connection in the internet and then access is being provided others can other use net can have an access they can download it it's getting spread in the world wide web so rtc what they are doing is that they filed the case against bbc bbs and the netcom stating that they should be made liable for the direct infringement reason because you make a copy that in your server in your storage and that copy is there for the 7 days and the 11 days that means it complies with the requirement of the fixation also and now the court has to look into is that whether the netcom and the bulletin board service can be made liable but who is the actual wrong doer everyone knows that it is alrich but rather than making the earlrich liable what they does is that they make them they may, they file a case against the netcom and the bbs saying that they should be made directly liable if you are going to make them liable what will happen tomorrow no one will come up with this internet service providers will not be there they will not be providing the access here what the court has held that the court refused to impose a direct liability on the is the reasoning what they have given is that also copyright is a strict liability no need for any intention it is a strict liability that there should be some element of volition or causation which is lacking where a defendant system is merely used to create a copy by the third party third party is making a copy they are not aware of it's not possible to look into is that what is being uploaded by each and every user they don't have any what you call any uh, volition or any uh, intention is not that you cannot make them liable here to establish direct liability under the act something more must be shown than mere ownership of a machine you provide a technology you provide a platform that doesn't mean that you are making an infringe used by others to make an illegal copy there must be actual infringing conduct with a nexus sufficiently close and casual 
to the illegal copying that one would conduct that machine owner himself trespassed into the exclusive domain of the copyright owner it was not there in this case they are considered to be not liable as a direct infringer but it may differ if you are going to make them liable as a contributory or a secondary liability but again many issues have to be looked into rather making the earlish they are making the net form and the bulletin board service liable because they are their machine their technology is making it copyable again in another case that is cartoon network limited versus c cable system csc holding in pocket here in this case what the cable vision system has done it is that they created a rs dvr remote storage digital video recorder what is the purpose of a digital video recorder we can record it we can make it copy of if an individual customer of a cable vision is having a digital video recorder we will record whenever the program is being telecasted in the channel when we are not able to watch it at the time when it is telecast we record copy is made in your drive if for your private purpose it comes under the fair use if suppose i don't have a dvr digital video recorder what i am doing is that a cable vision is facilitating me as a remote storage you can record the program in a remote location in the drive of the cable vision and each customer is allocated a portion for storing it recording the program how it is being done by the cable vision system is that they you then they will get the license from the broadcasting authority the content developer and they screen the content as it is given to the customer so that the when the program is telecasted in the tv channel the same at the time can be given to the customer also immediately it is routed to the customer for the streaming is being done in a single stream of data by using the rs dvr what they have done is that they split the single stream of data into two streams one it immediately goes to the customer the when it is being uplink the second stream of data it enters into the broadband media router the router where it goes it enters it enters into the primary that is uh, it enters into the primary buffer in just buffer buffer means where you are retaining a copy it buffers that one it goes to the customer directly second one it enters into the broadband media router first it enters into the first buffer that is a primary ingest buffer when it enters a copy is made that that program is being there for 0.2 seconds right if any customer is interested they can press the button they can they can record it when if the customer is giving the message of recording it enters into the next buffer that is the secondary buffer and there also that copy is being retained for 1.2 seconds then it goes into the aroya server it's an hard drive where the copy is being retained this is how the recording is being done where the uh copies is made in a remote location by the customer here. so customer is giving the direction which program has to be has to be recorded when they wanted to watch that particular program which is being stored in the drive of the cable vision the aroya server they using the remote and a setup box which contain the software with 
support the RSDVA. A. Make a request for the playback. You store it. You make a request for it. When you make a request for it, what is happening is that that recorded program you can watch it in your television channel here. Your television with the help of this particular software. This is how the system works and how the copy is made, being made. The peculiarity of the buffer is that it overrides. It's a one program. It is in a second, second it overrides. The moment the next program, next will, next uh, what do you call, next shot will come. The earlier one will be removed from it. But in a fraction of a second, what you can what you can see that you are making a recording here. And now the issue which arises here in this case is that by briefly storing data in the primary ingest buffer and other data buffer integral to the function of RSDVR, Cable Vision would make copies of protected work, thereby directly infringe plain test exclusive right of reproduction. Right to reproduction has been infringed. Then, the next issue is that by copying program into the Aruya server, that is the art disk, the playback copy, Cable Vision would again directly infringe the reproduction right. Again, the right to reproduction is being infringed. Third one, by transmitting the data from the Aruya server art disk to the RSDVR customer in response to the playback re request, Cable Vision would directly infringe plain test exclusive right to public performance. So these are the rights which are being infringed using the RSDVR. Now the issue which arises is that can the cable vision be directly liable for it? They provide the machine. They provide the tools for it. And who is actually doing the infringement? Is it the cable vision or is it the customer also? Copies produced by the RSDVR system are made by the RSDVR customer. They make a request for the record. And Cable Vision's contribution to this reproduction by providing the system does not warrant the imposition of direct liability. Right? You cannot make them liable. So in both the case, what they have done is that they made internet service provider, they made the person who has provided a platform to be directly liable. If they are going to sue the Earl Rich in the first case or the RSDVR customer in the in this case, you can see that both of them can take the difference of a fair use because they are watching it in the closed room of a private place. That becomes the issue of a fair use. Rather than making them liable, what they have done is that they made the provider as liable under the direct infringement, but the court was clear enough that they are not liable. It is not they who have done the direct infringement. Now, can they be made secondary liability? Secondary liability means making third party liable for the act committed by an another person. It can be a vicarious liability. It can be a contributory liability. Vicarious liability based on the principle of a respondent superior. That is, one who has the right and ability to supervise the infringing conduct. And he gets a financial interest in the infringing activity. Contributory liability. One who with the knowledge of infringing activity induces, causes, or materially contribute to the infringing conduct of another may be liable as a contributory infringement. Here we will be discussing some of the cases to make the secondary liability of a contributory or a vicarious liability. The case here is Perfect 10 Incorporated Company versus Amazon.com. Here, Perfect 10, they market and sell copyright images of a nude model. They created a website of their own. And the photos which is being, being provided in their website, it is a paid website. User has to pay for it to get an access to it. They have a magazine of, their, of theirs also, which is in circulation. 
and very limited users are only who is interested in paying and accessing it will alone be provided the app here the google here they are the search engine in this case the google are providing the service of a image search so if any image is being selected and kept and inserted in the search box how the google will do it is that using a software of a crawling they index everything from the website create a database so when we make a request they will look they will search in the index and they will provide the access to us access in the sense they will provide the website they will provide the list where you can have an access that is provided by way of a thumbnail image with a html instruction a thumbnail a smaller size the full size image they will reduce to a smaller size and it is of a lower resolution clarity will not be there at the bottom you can see that an html instruction will also be given they are storing in their server only the thumbnail image and thumbnail image will not serve the purpose of viewing a full size image they are storing only the thumbnail image of a lower resolution and a lesser clarity if you wanted to add the look into the full size image only you will be able to add a better clarity with a better resolution they are providing the and html instruction if you click on any of the html instruction you can see that the third party website where this particular photographs are that it will be framed into the google web page right we call that as a framing third party website which contain the full size image will be framed in the web page of the google web. right the bottom part you can see that the third party website is that third party here is the stolen content website owner right that is framed so any person now if you look into the screen itself you can see that on the, in the top itself you can see that the google is that when you look into it you will feel an image that it is google page only it is a google web page we will never look and say that it is a third party page has been framed inside the google right it creates an impression but actually it is the website of a third party what they are doing is that they are giving a link linking here is the inline linking they are providing the page where it contains the full size image is being linked and framed in the google web page here so here we will be seeing that linking is that and the framing is also that perfect tense file the case against the google by saying that google substantially assist the website to distribute infringing copies to a worldwide market they crawl it index it search it and they are providing the link in the thumbnail image what is stored in the server thumbnail full size is stored in the website of the stolen content website owner but what they are doing is that they are assisting in distributing the infringing copies to a worldwide market then assist a worldwide audience of a user to access the infringing material also what they are doing a user who wanted to view the perfect ten photograph he doesn't wanted to go and register and make a payment for it he is able to view it with the help of a google search engine can we make the google liable for it yes what is stored on the thumbnail not the full size full size in that so if a computer system operator learns of a specific infringing material available on his system if google is being given a notice that what is being linked is a stolen one then a responsibility is there on the google to remove such material from the system the operator knows as knows of and contribute to direct infringement if he knows it it doesn't remove it then he is liable for the contributory computer system operator can be else contributory liable if it has actual knowledge that 
specific infringing material is available using its system not constructive notice actual knowledge that specific infringing activity material is available using its system and can take simple measure to prevent further damage to copyrighted work yet continue to provide access to infringement if he fails to remove or disable the act then he can be made liable or else the google cannot be made liable you we can see that google doesn't even know that what is there in the website of the third party he said infringing copyrighted work while using the software of a crawling they are not looking into the website of the paid website right that the user cannot be given an access only if they pay alone they will be given a password and a id for it those website they are not looking into it but here we can see that they are able to they are able to, what is, uh, they are not able to look into that what is done to say copyright infringing or not they are not able to look into so we cannot make the google liable another interesting case is that of a perfect pen incorporated company versus vita international service association what a perfect pen has done is that rather than making the website who has stolen the content or rather making the user who is downloading that photograph as a liable what they have done is that they say file the case against the credit card owner like visa international service association mastercard international inc and several affiliated bank and the data processing service for secondary life what is the reason they are telling is that you got an access to the stolen website to come to get that photograph you have to make a payment you are making a payment that means the infringing activity is getting completed when the payment is being complete and your credit card is facilitating to infringe the copyrighted work so what they are telling is that they should be contributory liable for the wrong which is done by the user here court here majority held that they are not contributory liable or vicariously liable for the direct infringement they cannot be made responsible for it but for a surprising there is a dissenting judgment dissenting judgment says that why is locating infringing images more central to infringement than paying for them google on the one side provides the that is facilitating the user which website you can view that particular photograph the search in what the credit card owners are doing is they are able to do the infringement by paying it if infringing image cannot be found that can be no infringement but if infringing in images cannot be paid there can be no infringement either if it is not viewed not you are not able to get the link then there is no infringement if you are not able to pay also there is no infringement location service and payment service are central to the infringement here so both are considered to be the same with the google they are saying that if they had an actual knowledge or a specific knowledge they can be made liable why not the payment service providers or also can be made liable for it so we have seen with the direct liability we have seen the secondary liability making the third person liable for the act of the direct infringement either there should be a contributory liability or vicarious the way is that liability of the online service for intermediary intermediaries we can see that they are being provided with a safe harbor limiting the liability of the service provider certain functions of the intermediaries that is the online service provider or the internet service provider they are being given certain safe harbor the safe harbor include the function include when the isp are acting as a communication link transitory digital network communication provide a means for me to communicate with the other person second one system catch system catching it says that 
if I'm requesting for a particular web page, I get an access. The the broadband that, that is the bandwidth will be more because it has to get it from the original server. What the server which is near to me will do is that where my request is being satisfied, they will catch it. Temporarily, they will catch it. Why? Next time any other user is making a request for the same web page, the access will be provided at a lesser bandwidth. Time. So it's only to reduce the bandwidth, but they can only catch it only for a temporary duration or a transitory because any updation is being done in the original server, you will not be able to get from the catching material. Yet. So it has to be sent back to the original server after a transitory duration. That is the another function which is done by the internet service device. The third one is storing information on its system at the direction of the user. User is that. User is making a request to store the particular information or a data in the server of the internet service provider. You cannot be made live. Fourth one is providing information location tool like IFA text link. What is done by the Google here? The Google online search engines are there. You cannot be made liable because they are giving only the HTML information. Here we have the case of a YouTube case. We have come international incorporated company versus YouTube. Everyone knows that YouTube channel contains most of the videos of the infringing. Right? Everyone can upload the video. The slogan itself for the YouTube is broadcast yourself. You create a video, agree to the terms and conditions, upload the video, your videos will be there in the YouTube channel. Information which you are storing in the videos which you are uploading in. Can the YouTube, the Google, now it has been taken up by the Google, whether the Google will be made liable for the wrong which is done by the user here. Can we make the internet service provider liable? Here it revolves around the interpretation of the statute. It says that it covers infringement claims that arise by reason of the storage at the direction of a user of material that reside on a system or a network controlled or operated by or for the service provider. Who is uploading? That the server. Who is having the control? Service provider is having the control. To get the safe harbor, certain requirement is first one, internal service provider should not have an actual knowledge of the infringing material. In the absence of an such actual knowledge, they should not aware of facts or circumstances from which the infringing activity is apparent. Third one, if they have an on knowledge or awareness, they should remove it or disable the access to the material. If they are not doing it, removing it also, they will be made contributely liable for the wrong which is done by the user. So what is needed is that to get the safe harbor, limiting the liability of the ISP, they should not have an actual knowledge. If they don't have the actual knowledge, they should not have an awareness of facts and circumstances from which the infringing activities are If they have an actual knowledge and awareness, they have a responsibility to remove and disable the access to the material. If this requirement is being complied only, you will be able to enjoy the benefit of the safe hour, limiting the liability of the internet service provider. Here, to make them liable, what is needed is that actual knowledge is right? And that too, it should be specific and identifiable infringement should be known to the internet service provider. If they know it, not taking any action, then they will be made contributory liable. Actual knowledge, having a specific and identifiable knowledge about the infringement and if they are not taking the due diligence, they have been made liable. When the videos in the YouTube channel is being uploaded, the YouTube channel is having a software, 
it does certain automated software function. The software function which is done by them is that first one transcoding. Transcoding means the original videos which the user are uploading, it has to be converted into the flash format so that many viewers can view that particular video without losing the clarity of it. Second one is playback. That is another function which is done by the YouTube channel. Playback, it says that if I am watching a particular video in a YouTube, that will be cached. It will be in my watch list. So whenever I am opening a YouTube, you can see that watch list is also being coming. That is a playback is being given. Third one is related video function. Related video, if I am making a request for a particular video, I can see that using an algorithm, they are giving me the videos which are which are related to the video which I have made a request. So these three functions are considered to be an automated function where there is no what you call interference by the user. It happens automatically. But another function which is done by them is that third party syndication. Third party syndication, what they are doing is that they are selecting certain videos. They are selecting certain videos, vindicating it and giving it to the third party. While selecting and giving it to the third party, they have a knowledge here. Can they get the benefit for this also? Right? All the three functions which we can see that they are not aware of it, actual knowledge is lacking here and actual knowledge is lacking here. But in the case of a vindication, we can see that there is knowledge is that they are aware, they are selecting the video, they are giving it to the third party. The author is that if you have a knowledge, specific knowledge about the infringement which is taking place, you have a responsibility also. Remove or disable the act. If you are not doing it, you are being made liable here. With respect to the third party syndication alone, they have remanded back to the lower court to look into it once again. But in the lower court, again, we can see that they have given the safe arbor by not making them liable. This is another interesting case. So what we have seen that the internet service provider cannot be contributively made liable unless and until they have an actual knowledge or a specific knowledge of infringement. If they have it, they have to observe the due diligence. Remove it, disable the access. Here, when you are removing it or disabling the access also, you also have a responsibility to look into is that whether the video which is uploaded is a fair use or not. This case is the best example for it. Tiffany Lin, what she has done it is that she takes a video, a 29 seconds video of a two children in the kitchen. In the background, we can see the song, we can hear the song of the Let's Go Crazy by the Prince. Universal Music Corporation is having the license, they are having the ownership for this particular music. And they have appointed a person who will look into it that in all the YouTube channels, whether anyone has uploaded the song of the Let's Go Crazy, if they are they will be giving a notice to the internet service provider. Here, when they are looking into, they were able to see that in the background, this particular song is there. What they have done is that they gave the notice to the internet service provider asking them to remove that particular video from the YouTube. And as for the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, the Title II, it says that if a notice is being given, you have to take down the notice. Within 36 hours, you have to remove or disable the access and also you have to intimate to the user who have uploaded the video. And it's duly being intimated to the user. User here, the mother of the two children, what she did it is that she sent a counter notification stating that 
this video is not an infringement that is a misstatement or a misrepresentation done by the universal music and this video should be again it should be reinstated again and when the internet service provider the youtube channel gets this counter notification they have a duty to inform to the person who has served the notice and the responsibility to give that is provide an access or upload the video minimum within the 10 business days to the maximum within the 14 business days they have support to that is put back procedure notice take down notice counter notification put back notice now what she claims is that when you give a notice you have a responsibility to see that there is a fair use is also that i can show you the video and you can see whether there is an infringement is there or not Can you say that in this particular video it is an infringement of the Prince Let's Go Crazy? Where in the background you can hear hear the song of it, but actually what is that? Will it not be considered as a fair? So when you give a notice, you have a responsibility to look into it that whether it comes under the defence of the fair use or not. We should not always support the internet service provider or the person who gives that complaint. Look into it. it. Whether they are doing it in a proper way or not, if that is a misrepresentation, they are liable to pay the damages to the first user who has uploaded the video. Here. Now coming to the safe harbor for intermediaries as per Indian law. In Indian law, we have the definition for the intermediaries as given under the IT Act 2000, amended in the year 2008, under Section 2W. 79 is that which limits the liability of the internet service provider it says that who is an intermediary any person who on behalf of another person receive stores transmit the record or provide any service with respect to that record that is what receive stores trans it includes telecom service provider netcom service provider internet service provider web hosting service provider search engine online payment site online auction site online marketplaces and the cyber space it's very broad it included many intermediaries within the ambit no one can take the that no one can be made responsible for the infringement which is done by the user they are being provided with a safe harbor under section 79 as amended in the year 2008 of the it act an intermediary must not be held liable for a third party content information or a data hosted by it if function of intermediary is limited to providing access to communication system transmitter intermediary did not initiate the transmission intermediary did not select the receiver of the transmission intermediary did not select or modify the information contained in the data if they are having a knowledge observe the due diligence while discharging the duty intermediary did not conspire abet or induce the commission of the unlawful act intermediary has the knowledge of not as it being sent a notice to remove the objectionable material nor it failed to remove it you can see that comes under the any of the defense they will not be made by here we can hear at the case of a super cassette industries limited versus might pay in level I can listen from disturbance. 
Roisy Chaku, can you mute your audio? Okay. Super Cassette Industries Limited is a T series. They have a collection of songs, cinematograph films, and the sound records. Tiffin and Yo, they are the internet service provider providing the social networking and the entertainment website. The user of it, what they are doing is that they are uploading the video of the song and the MySpace is providing them the platform, a place, a space to mm -hmm. upload. So by providing it, are they doing the copyright infringement? As per section 51 of the Copyright Act, clause 2, it says that if any person permits for profit any place to be used for the communication of the work to the public, then such communication constitutes an infringement of the copyright in the work, unless he was not aware or reasonable ground for believing that such communication to the public would be an infringement of copyright. So the first thing what has to be examined is that whether any place for profit can it be a virtual space? Can it be a website? If so, I say this liable. Again, to make them liability, what is needed is that knowledge is also an essential element. If he has a knowledge that the videos which is being uploaded is an infringing one, then my space can also be made liable for the contributory infringement. Here, the court decided that Ando, any place also include the cyber space also, the web space also. Regarding the knowledge part, the user when they upload the video, they have to enter into the terms and conditions. And in the terms and condition, they have to state that what is the, they are given, they should give a limited license to the MySpace. Limited license in the sense, license to amend, delete, or modify the work suitably to uploading in the web. That is given to the MySpace. What they are doing is that they are adding an advertisement in the beginning of the video and also in the end of the video they are adding it that means they have a knowledge for adding and the advertisement in the beginning and also in the end they have the knowledge whether the video which is being uploaded is an infringing or not again the advertisement will be played in the beginning giving it time for the video to be downloaded. That is also being done with the knowledge. It is not being done by the user or it is not being done by the using an automated software. It is done in person by the MySpace by adding the advertisement in the beginning and the end of the video. MySpace, while creating this website, they are given an information to the, all the music companies, including the T-Series companies that they are going to create this particular platform where the users can upload the videos. They had created certain filter mechanism. Filter mechanism, if any copyrighted videos are there, they will be given an hashtag. That videos will be segregated. It cannot be uploaded in that particular website, but it's not possible to cover all the music or the songs of the different musical companies it's a very difficult task and now when a user is uploading getting a limited license knowledge element is there. so what we can see is that any place include the internet space or the cyber space the website here using for the profit they have an advertisement with the help of an advertisement they are generating the revenue out of it 
they are modifying it they are adding the advertisement in the beginning and the end so knowledge factor is also that when they have the knowledge when they are using it for the profit any place they will be liable for the copyright infringement the court here in this case l that the my space liable for the infringement of the videos which are being uploaded by the user by getting the limited you cannot always take the benefit of the same part of if you have a knowledge you have to take up the responsibility of a due diligence on remove that, that particular website from that video from that particular website coming to the third aspect of it so we have the first direct infringement liability secondary liability liability of the internet service providers coming to the next one the liability of the device manufacturer person who creates a device manufacture a device that device is used for infringement of a copyright can they be subjected to the secondary liability if so and the what so comes on here we will be discussing the three sony corporation of america versus universal city studio a and m record versus napster case coming to the last one metro goldwyn mayer studios incorporated company versus brock turkey first case sony corporation of america versus universal city studio beta max case or we call it as a popularly known as a video cassette recorder case sony company they manufactured the vcr video cassette recorder and they advertised by for selling this particular product by saying that watch whatever channel when a program is telecast to record it if you are not able to watch it at the time when it is being telecasted you record it you watch it at the later point of time in your own convenience we call that as a time shifting time shifting is permissible as a fair use permitted by the law by the judiciary as a fair use it's a difference we can shift it another purpose for which you can use the video cassette recorder is that you can maintain a library of it the programs you can maintain a library you can keep a copy in it third one is you are making a derivative of that you are removing the advertisement when it is being telecasted only the program alone is being recorded here you are creating a derivative of that that's an infringement but the court here evolved the doctrine of staple article doctrine of staple article says that if any device which is capable of substantial non infringing use time shifting is a non infringing use capable of a substantial non infringing use then that particular device is considered to be a valid one manufacturer the device cannot be made liable for the wrong which is done by the user of that particular device it says that the sale of copying equipment like the other article of commerce does not constitute contributory infringement if the product is widely used for legitimate unobjectionable purpose indeed it need merely be capable of substantial non infringing use so that device manufacturer cannot be made liable if the device is capable of substantial non infringing use the next case is of a nap Napster is a case of a peer-to-peer -peer network, but with a centralized server. What the Napster has done it is that he created a website. The user of a Napster website has to create an ID and a password. They have to download the free music share song. Once they have downloaded it in their drive of their computer, they have to. create a library of all the music files which they are having it with an index that is the name of the music or the name of the movie or the artist in any way you have to create an index for it and 
should be in an MP3 version of it, so that in an MP3 format we can share the files easily. What they are doing is that they are creating a library. They are being storing it in their drive in the MP3 format. When the user is in a online, the music share software will look into it that whether they have done it in a proper way. Once they have done it in a proper MP3 format, what they will do is that the index which they have created in their library will be uploaded in the central server of the Napster. So Napster is maintaining a directory of all the index of the user. They don't have the music files here. Only the index is being uploaded in the central server, a directory of all the users who are in online at the time. If any one person is making a request for a particular music, Napster server, the music share software, they will search in the index and they will try to identify which IP owner is having this particular music in their drive. Once they have located, identified it, they will give the IP address of the host user to the requesting user. Then after there is a connectivity between the two users and that connectivity is provided by the Napster. So here, whether the Napster can be made live, the software which is provided by the Napster here facilitating sharing of the music files with the user the files which is being stored in the drive. When you download a music, right to reproduction is being violated. When you upload a music, right to distribution is being infringed. So whether the Napster can be made liable or we know that the Sony principle of a doctrine of staple article cannot be applied here can be applied when only if it is capable of substantial non-infringing use. In the Sony, once they have sold out the product, they don't have any control. Control element is not there. But in the case of a Napster, everything is being controlled and monitored by him using the central server. What files are being shared is also being known to the Napster here. Napster here being made contributory and vicariously liable for the wrong which is done by the user of the Napster here. They cannot take the plea of the doctrine of the staple article of the commerce here. The Sony principle will not be applied. Sony, after it has been sold out, they don't have any control. Napster, in the peer-to-peer, -peer, where the central server is that, every control is there with the Napster. Another case that is of a Grokster, which is a case of a True peer to peer. Yes, if a true peer to peer, it is a decentralized, no centralized. Thing. What a blockster has done, they created the two, the peer to peer talking techno uh, the technology that is of a true peer to peer technology. It's a software. Once the software is being given to the user, they don't have any control over the files which is being shared among the peer group. So they don't. It is coming similar to that of the Sony's case. Sony also doesn't have any control. Napster, that Rockster is also not having any control for the Nutella technology or for the password technology. Using the technology of the only the, the music files are being shared here. Sharing of the files is taking. It's a case of a true peer to peer. Fourth here, confirm the doctrine of staple article, saying that it can be used for a substantial non infringing purpose. But Court made the Grokster liable based on the theory of inducement. Based on the theory of inducement. How the music files are being shared here is that there is no central server similar to that of a Napster. Here, if one user is making a request, it will go and the software will go and search in the index of the next user. If it is found, they will provide the link. It will go, go on, go on until and unless the user with whom that particular file is being available, they will look into it. They will search for it. Once they are able to find it out that this particular user is having it, then they will provide a link with that particular user. The files are being shared here. No role by the grocer here. It is purely done based on a true peer-to-peer -peer technology. 
court your has taken the plea of the confirmed the plea of the doctor of triple article but they made them liable for the inducement theory inducement theory in the sense when they supplied this particular software they promoted or induced by saying that what you are doing it with the napster you are able to do it with a gross sir open nap what infringement you are able to do it with a napster the same infringement you can do it with a proctor of inducing it advertising it promoting them for it so based on the theory of the inducement we can see that the proctor is being made liable why the doctor of staple article has been incorporated by evolved by the judiciary is that technological development has to take place you cannot make the device manufacturer liable if you are going to make them liable tomorrow no one will come up with a new technology need a balance so what they have said is that when you create a technology see that the technological development takes place don't curtail the development on the ground by saying that it result in a co copyright infringement let the copyright owner start using their own technological protection measure to protect it to prevent the copyright infringement in the digital environment we can see that the court is on the one side saying that you start adopting your encryption technology start using a technological protection measure but on the other side we can see that they made the blockster liable based on the theory of the inducement are they not curtailing the development of the technology if you compare sony and the blockster both the cases are this more or less the same sony also advertised by saying that you can make a library you can use it for the time shifting so the time shifting is considered as a fair use library is considered to be an infringement blockster says that they do don't have any control once the software is being given to the user but they are saying that use it what you are able to do it for the master open map so only because of this if you look from both angles it says but code in the one case they are saying that technological development has to take place so they promoted that option of staple article but here they confirm but they made liable under the another theory now coming to the next aspect of it that is a technological protection measure the court says that let the copyright owner start using a encryption technology lock it create a digital lock copyright owner started using an encryption technology of a technological protection measure if you create anything there are people who is ready to break it open out if someone says no i will do it there are an expert who is ready to break it open the technology alone will not serve the purpose what is needed is that there is a need for a support of the law it resulted in the coming up of the anti self convention law wipo came up with the internet treaty that is a wipo copyright treaty is that wipo performance and phonogram treaty is that it says that obligation concerning the technological protection measure it says that contracting party shall provide adequate legal protection and effective legal remedy against the circumvention of effective technological measures that are used by author in connection with the exercise of their rights and in respect of their work two types of technological protection measures are that one is to prevent the act another one is to prevent the exercise of the copyright so two types of ppm are there. under the digital millennium copyright act they have explained it clearly how it is being prohibited if any person is circumventing it you are being made liable for it take an example you are going to the library if the library is closed we know that library is nothing but the pressure of the books are there for us to learn if the library is closed access is prevented you cannot enter into the library you have to wait till the library is open once the library is open you as an individual can enter into the library you can go and get the book read the book if you need to make a copy of it law says that reprography unit is that you go and take a copy of it for the individual act of circumvention they are saying that prohibition is there only for the access 
there is no prohibition for the right protection once you get a lawful access you are allowed to make a copy of it various principle is being permitted for it but there is a prohibition for the manufacturer who are creating a device exclusively for the purpose of breaking this particular law for access also you cannot circumvent it for making a copy also you cannot make any device or any uh, what do you call any product which is made only for the purpose of breaking it open then the question which arises is that in a case of a library you go to the library you take a book you read it you make a copy of it because the xerox machine is that the photography unit is that in the case of a digital you can see that if you get a license for it access will be provided but we can see that the option like control c and control p is not working without the support of a device manufacturer or a software developer is it possible for us to make a copy of it how the balancing nature of the copyright is going to be disturbed the very purpose of creating a copyright law is to see that the balance should be the access should be there on the one side by protecting the interest of the creator and the developer of the copyrighted work now when it is being digitalized we can see that access is being prohibited if you pay for it you are being provided the access in a lawful manner once you are being getting an access you are not able to use it for making a copy of it that comes the issue of the fact how you are able to do it manufacturer they are saying that complete prohibition is that you cannot create a device for circumventing the access you cannot create a device for making a copy of it. if you are not permitted to create how come the user the individual can able to have a copy of that copyrighted work in a digital age so this is all with respect to the digital environment we can see that now the technology is further developing and now it is the artificial intelligence you can see that till the day we consider the computer as a tool the device now they are the creator they are creating a new they are developing a new product then when they are developing it Many issues are coming up in the popular. What are some of the first issue which we have to discuss is whether the rights can be given to the AI, whether the AI can be considered as a legal person. That's when n number of debate and discussion is going on on the one side. On the other side, we can see that if the AI is doing the infringement, whom you are going to make the liable? Can the programmer who creates the program can be made liable? But law says that for any computer generator work. the programmer is considered to be the one who is considered as the author can the responsibility will be taken up by the author the person who is using that particular computer and doing it now with the deep learning and a machine learning you are giving a cognitive thinking capacity here debate discussion is going on till there is no clarity on it then another problem which we are going to face in the copyright law we can see that when the artificial intelligence were came into existence so now many work has been reduced to an algorithm in a digital form this is the best example of a ai generated work that is a rembrandt who is he is the greatest visual artist in the history of art the most important in the dutch art history is no more 347 years after his death you are going to unveil the painting of the rembrandt how it is possible it's by reducing it to an algorithm ai by beauty recognition technology used in capturing the photograph 346 paintings were scanned consisting of 148 million pixels 168263 fragments were looked into now using the technology they started doing the creation it's the best example of the creative work which is being created using the ai technology who is the author of it if suppose it is an infringement who is liable for it 
now we can see that ai has made it possible to unveil the person who is no more the painting which is being done by them which is not found now can again be brought back to the line how by giving the cognitive thinking capacity or the ability to the computer now having an ai technology another problem which we are going to face in the coming days that is the deep fake technique it is also a subset of ai technology deep fake technology is an artificial intelligence powered method of creating synthetic media which allows user to speak act as if they were another person similar to that of the mortic emotion the way of talking expression exactly the same here this is also a part of a ai technology what on the one side if you look this particular deep fake technology it's having its own advantages beneficial also if used properly these technologies serve as an excellent tools for media education entertainment and practically all areas of cultural life used even we can see that this particular deep tech technology is being used for promoting the art and the culture the best example is the dali museum in florida uses a realistic deep fake hologram of salvador dali to welcome visitors even take selfies with them see i'll show you the video that how this particular technology is used to promote the art and culture this is the best example for promoting the copyright are you able to hear the audio and the video anyone please respond yes ma'am no. audio is not there video is there audio so you have got both thank you yes audio is there
To understand the art, we need to understand the artist behind me. And this this technique allows the Zabers of the Dali to see it. Hope you all have enjoyed this video. This is the best example where the deep fake technology is used to promote the art and culture. Now you can see the dark side of it. Now is the best example. Still, the dark side of it. Still, the question is incomplete. Who is an what is the nature of life? The one who developed the deep fake technology, the one who used the deep fake technology, the one who is doing the space trap, who is uh, considered to be the lifer, still more to be decided. And we know that digital technology is always a problematic for the copyright law. The internet is arguably the largest single threat the copyright law has faced since it was introduced. Legislature and court are continually passing and creating new laws to keep up with ever-changing digital landscape. But still, question will arise. Whether can we make them liable? We all are meeting in a virtual space now, in a virtual platform. We all are listening to what is that, what is listening to me, viewing my PPT, Seeing it, listening to the audio of it, but A is not longer. B will be one among them. It is nothing but next time when we are able to attend this particular training program, everyone will be there inside the laptop in a virtual mode where you can select the costume also, where you can discuss our emotion, our action, everything will be possible. This is nothing but the meta world. Any questions? I think everyone is there now in the meta world thinking about when we can all enter into this. Everyone is viewing and seeing it. We have to jump into it now. Facebook has come into the meta. WhatsApp is now meta. Days are not far when we all enter into it. But it creates n number of copyright problems will be there. There is no answer for it. Who will be the infringer? Who will be made liable for it? What nature of the liability?
I think it's raining there in Kerala. Also, to... Yes, it's raining heavily, man. It's... it's raining heavily. I can see that some of the chats they have been posted by saying that thunderstorm and heavy rain is there. I'm not able to hear you, madam. Your audio is mute. Shall we presume that there are no questions? Yes, ma'am, that will be better. I think heavy rain, because of heavy rain, many of them will be leaving it. Uh, Renu, are you there? Renu? Hi, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, I think, Renu, there is a question in the chat box. Can you just read it? Yeah, yeah yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, the question from Divya Ganapati. How well do you think cyber law has been protecting cyber crimes against IPR? Again, the copyright law has to look into it. If any infringement is there relating to the IPR, cyber law itself says that, look into the IP law. So if any infringement, look into the copyright law. Reno, if, if there are no more questions, you can offer your vote of thanks. Reno, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I can hear. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, it was a wonderful session. Thank you, ma'am, for your sharing your valuable time in this busy schedule with us. Uh, and I thank every participant for this session who so, uh, attended. And thank you, Bisni, ma'am, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vishmi, madam, for giving me also this opportunity to be part of this trading program. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much.